And are you refreshed? Good. Now what? Supposed to be getting fewer and fewer and fewer and fewer, yes? Hello? I suddenly forgot my questions. <laughs> my biggest questions are about turning around the energy. You know, when you... Sometimes things happen and you get down. And then what happens to me is I kind of stay in that for a couple days. But now you know some things that you didn't really know so well before. You know that, maybe you don't know this, when you sleep during the night, momentum of thought subsides. So you're less likely to wake up in the same vibrational place that you went to sleep in. But when you first wake up, you can turn your thoughts to the things that you were thinking about yesterday, and you can reconstitute that vibration, but you don't need to. So that's your best chance of diluting the energy with something that feels a little better. We used to teach a process that we called pivoting which said, when you know what you don't want, you know what you do want. And if you catch it early enough about things that you don't have a lot of momentum on, you can switch energy really quickly. Well, it's clear what I don't want. What I do want is this, and this is why I want that. And you can start adding to it. But if it's something that you've been troubled with for a while, or you've been thinking about for a while, the easiest thing is when you wake up, just to acknowledge that momentum did subside and that you don't have to think about this right now. And if you can just talk yourself into not thinking about the things that have been troubling you, the momentum of them will get slower and slower and slower until they can effectively become completely inactive in your vibration. Mm -hmm. Trying to think a positive thought to cover up a negative thought usually only makes the negative thought stronger. Have you ever been having a conversation with someone and you're sure you're right and they're sure that they're right and neither one of you are making any headway with either one of you with the other one and so you might as well just not talk because you can go on and on and on and neither one of you will budge well you kind of have that relationship with yourself your desires and your beliefs are sort of like those two people where I want this but and so if you can just try a little bit not to keep the resistant part active in time it won't be active a belief is just a thought you continue to think that's all yeah and also i think from upbringing and conditioning i think of the life as kind of a life of obligations you know you we know we want to say while you're saying that we want to go blah 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 because every word you speak about that just locks you in to some not all some beliefs that are not serving you everybody has some of that we talked about that earlier you observe it which causes you to offer a vibration which causes you to attract more of it which makes you say now i believe it and now you believe it, you attract more of it, and now you believe it more. Esther argued with us, but it's true. It's true, Abraham, it's true. So how can you ask me not to focus upon something that is true? And we say, we're asking you to focus upon things that feel good. <laughs> so if you're saying, how can I think different thoughts than I'm thinking? We say, first of all, you have to be aware of how the thoughts you're thinking feel and choose based upon how they feel rather than the content of them for a little while. Because frankly, most people would rather focus upon a really momentous negative thought than to have no thought at all. Because most people misunderstand and believe that in momentum there is power. And we just want you to leave with this thought. It's not momentum that brings the power, it's the alignment that brings the power. Because you could be really focused upon unwanted things and you can really get something going, but the true empowerment is in the thoughts that feel good to you. Because you've got your inner being backing you up in those. So how can I think different thoughts? Practice. How do I think different thoughts? Practice and care about how you feel. How do I think different thoughts? When you go to bed at night, acknowledge that when you wake up, they will have subsided. 
When you wake up in the morning, acknowledge that you have a different probability of thinking a different thought. When you meditate, you quiet thought. Is it easy? No. Is it possible? Yes. Is it rewarding? Yes. Is it worth it? Yes. Well, one of the thought patterns that I was stuck on, I have been stuck on, is I was in a relationship that wasn't making me happy. But at the same time, there was, there was a lot of, I was drawn to it, nevertheless. And so... Drawn to unhappiness? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't make me happy, but I don't want to give you up. We're miserable together, but let's keep going. Well, there, there's two sides to... Oh, were there positive things? Yeah, yeah, there were there positive. There are positive things about you, but I refuse to focus upon those. until you're gone and now I have to focus upon them to make myself feel better about not being with you. Well, <laughs> so I'm like eight months out of it. And no, you're not. <laughs> you're not out of it. So it's almost like it was just yesterday. Yeah, it, it is. It is. Because you've kept it active in your vibration as if it is yesterday. Yeah. Well, don't do that. I don't know how to stop. So what would you guess? Well, I think... Could you find something else to think about? Yes, but I think, I think it hinges on the belief that only one specific person can make you happy and I have to change that change that belief well if you believe that only one specific person can make you happy and that person's gone then you're in deep doo-doo <laughs> and you know why that thought feels so awful is because it's a ridiculous stupid thought <laughs> It's because your inner being knows for sure that's not the case. So when you say you're the only one for me and you're not here and you feel awful, 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 the reason it feels awful is not because the person isn't in your life right now. It's because you're using that person not being in your life as your excuse to pinch yourself off from your inner being who's thinking an entirely different thought about that. When we say the world is awash in money, the world is awash in partners for you. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. But it's easy, we know. See, this is what happens. You're all gonna really like this. Whether you're talking about a relationship or anything else, you're really, really, really gonna benefit from this conversation. So, when you don't really know about law of attraction and you're not really clear about the receptive mode and so you haven't really been deliberately tuning in and receiving the benefit of being tuned in, tapped in, turned on. So you haven't used the leverage of connection to create. So your creation has been hard. You meet someone, it's kind of a struggle, you work the kinks out, it's not easy, it gets better, it gets worse, it gets better, it gets worse. You state your grievances, you come to agreements, it gets a little better, and you just grind it out. And a little ways down the road, it's better than it was. Not much, but it's better than it was. And then, let's say it goes on for how long? Six years? Let's say that it goes on for six years where it's good and it's not good and it's good and it's not good, but it's mostly really hard work because you weren't tuned in, tapped in, turned on. You haven't had the advantage of the leverage of the universe. So it was so hard, which means you're so invested in it. So I don't want to start over again. Six years of hardship. I want that to pay off for me. So can't I just resurrect this relationship and can't we just pick up from the not so horrible place that we ended up? So we have a story to tell you. Isn't that sort of how it goes? I don't want to start over again. This was miserable and it's not quite as miserable now as it has been. So I don't want to give up all the gain that I made. That's not a very good reason to stay in a relationship. But 
we get it. If you are creating through blood, sweat, and tears, then you've got an investment that you want to capitalize on. But we're telling you there's another investment that you've made, and it's the vortex, and you've got another mountain of goodness that's flowing to you. And so now we have another story for you. So a man was talking to us about his financial empire that had crumbled. And he said, I'm in my 60s and I just can't see starting over again. And so what do I do? And we said to him, you're forgetting about the vibrational currency that you've amassed. You're not starting over. You are vibrationally so much more than you were before. And you're starting now with that vibrational currency that you can't give up. So you've got relationship currency. Because all of those things that didn't go well, you put in the vortex what you wanted. There's a much brighter, better relationship that's all queued up for you as a result of that relationship that was beneficial. And all you've got to do is find some way to let go of that long enough that you can get into the receptive mode and then what you really want will flow into your experience so easily, really. When we say you can't get there from there, what we mean is you can't get to where you want to be by following the same path. And the best thing to do is to just get off the subject altogether for a little while. You want to get ready to be ready. You want to be ready to be ready to be ready to be ready to be ready. And the first phase of being ready, you might not even have a thought of a relationship in your mind at all. Get off the topic because... Every subject is really two subjects, wanted and absence of what is wanted. So for a while, after something has sort of stung you in this way, thinking about it automatically activates the end of the stick that isn't to your advantage. So you're better off to stay off the subject, find something else that interests you a little bit. And we know, we know for sure that you have the ability to think about something other than that. We know that you do. You have the ability to think about something other than that. Your inner being is queuing up things for you all the time, 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 all the time. You heard us talking to our friend earlier and we said, you just got to listen, you just got to listen, you just got to listen, which brings us to a really important thing that if you hear it, it will free you from this dilemma. And that is, consider the difference between a thought you're thinking and a thought you're receiving. A thought that you're broadcasting and a thought that you're receiving. And we promise you, when you're in the receiving mode of your inner being, your inner being is not broadcasting, woe is me, thoughts about a lost relationship. That's the country western station. <laughs> your inner being is broadcasting what a beautiful day it is and how magnificent your body is and how good to be alive it is and how many magnificent things there are in this world and how many wonderful things there are to think about. And your inner being is broadcasting so much remarkably wonderful stuff for you to receive. Your inner being is not saying, you know, it will get better, don't worry about this. Your inner being is not saying any of that. And when you tiptoe into that arena, then you sacrifice your connection and that's why you feel bad. So we can say to you unequivocally, you're not feeling the loss of a relationship. You're feeling the loss of your inner being and blaming it on that. So you could say to what feels like your lost lover, I'm really mad at you because you caused me to lose connection with my inner being because I don't have the ability to focus. I'm just following the thoughts that I've been broadcasting, but that's not true of you. You have the ability to focus. You focus really well. In fact, that's sort of what your dilemma is. You're like a dog on a bone. You get hold of something and you just think it and think it and think it and think it and think it. And that's why we want you to think about not thinking. That's why we want you to think about receiving. And we've had some really good conversations here today about what the receiving mode is and how to get into the receiving mode and what the benefits of being in the receiving mode are. Yes? There are so many people that have had so much lost love that there is a very powerful river stream of consciousness that's flowing that's easy to tap into. So much so that when you get hold of a little piece of it, you can feel so much worse than this relationship is worth because you just get tapped into all lost love. But why do that when you can tap into the energy that creates worlds? Yeah? Yeah?